Well, good morning everybody. It's been a while. I know I said I was going to do this next bit uh, in a couple of weeks. Well, it's been six weeks. The, here in the western part of Idaho in the Treasure Valley, the uh, wildfire smoke has just been unbelievable. The visibility is just horrible. Everything smells like burnt brush and Frankly, my sinuses and my allergies have been screaming at me for weeks. So, plus the fact that it's been in excess of 125 degrees on my front porch every day for over a month. This morning, it's like somebody turned a switch. It's suddenly it's 60 degrees outside, no smoke. I can see blue skies again. It's time to go to work. So. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to fight back against the most insidious monster that affects everybody in the overlanding community. That being dust. We're going dust busting today, so stay tuned. We're going to fix the tailgate area of this truck so that the dust doesn't come in anymore. And we're going to install a work table on the tailgate. Coming up about that quick. Okay, what we're going to be doing today is installing a seal kit from a company called that puts out a product called Rock Block. It's made by Extruded Solutions Incorporated. That's these guys. And you can find them at rockblock.com. That's R O K B L O C K one word dot com. Um, they sell two different kits. They sell this one, which is a standard kit, which is a seal that goes across your tailgate, across the gap at the foot, that you cut to fit. And this red strip is a permanent bond tape that will keep it in there in that spot forever. Uh, they all, the kit also comes with side uh, seals that go up the sides of the bed and seal the sides and the corners. So this is a generic kit. These fit virtually any truck. However, don't just run over there or run down to Amazon and try and buy one. The first thing you need to do when you consider putting one of these kits in is go to their website at rockblock.com right here, rockblock.com or tailgateseal.com. Either one of those will get you to their website. When you get to their website, look up your particular truck because all the trucks are different. Even between brand names, the, the tailgates are different. So you need to know whether you need to buy this standard kit, which is, fits the Toyota, or the what they call the XL kit, which is several inches wider than this and trucks like Nissan's use that one so you don't know exactly which one it's going to be until you look it up then go ahead and order it you can order it directly from their website or you can go look it up on amazon.com and get the same thing for the same price so in the cost See, this one I believe is about $45. This is called the, the full kit. It's got the rock block, uh, rock and dust seal that goes across the bottom of the tailgate and the regular dust seals that go around the sides. It's two separate kits combined in one. So that's what we're going to install. Okay. On next thing we're going to do is, well, turn the camera and you can look over here. I mean, you know, the more I do this, the more I understand why these, the big overlanders actually hire other people to help them do these videos. One person doing it isn't really enough. You need two. Anyway, after we get the seal in, we're going to take this standard stock tailgate cover off the truck 
and replace it with this. This is a hook road polyethylene uh, work table that will replace this and sit here and it's perfectly flat and it's got actually got cup holders on it if you believe it or not. So this is going to replace the stock tailgate cover. We have to take the tailgate cover off anyway to install the seal. Might as well change it now. All right. That's what we're going to do. Shouldn't take too long. This is a very basic install. All you got we have to do is take this cover off, clean everything within an inch of its life so that the tape sticks and never comes off. That'll be the hardest part right there. That's going to take more time than anything, cleaning everything. And then we'll cut and install the tape and install the table be done. Should take no more than an hour and a half, two hours at the very most. Uh, most of that's going to be spent cleaning. So let's get started. Now, before we do anything else, we're going to test fit this and see if it's all the holes and everything line up. Well, what do you know? They do. How about that? Good deal. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not. Cup holders. <laughs> Okay, that looks clean. It's not. Uh, we're going to go over it again with glass cleaner and let that dry. And then once that's done, we're going to use alcohol pads, which are uh, basically the uh, same thing you would use for cleaning lenses on your glasses, the little uh, sight saver pads. Going to go over all the, the entire thing with those to make sure there's absolutely no dirt left. Because unless it's absolutely clean, that double that life bond tape will peel right off. Okay, let's get me let me get the stuff and we will start on the next one. Oh, one of the nice things about this kit is they give you the alcohol pads 
to clean this as part of the kit. And, and also in here you'll find a look like a little magic marker and that's a, uh, a seal prep pen. On the surface area where you're going to stick the tape you use this pen ahead of time and that makes it sticky, stickier, so that the tape will actually adhere to it and not come off. Okay, let's get started on this. Now, where did I put my scissors? Hmm. Getting old has its drawbacks. What's my name again? <laughs> And we're still getting dirt off of it. You get the picture. Okay, we've scrubbed and we've scrubbed and we've scrubbed and cleaned and we've scrubbed. So now it's reasonably clean. We're going to set this in place. I've already trimmed it in the corners to make it fit where it should in the corners. That looks like it's about right. Let's see, I'm going to attempt to show you here on the camera what my guideline is. Okay, here on the underside is the tape. And I want that tape to go along this bossed ridge right here, the whole length of the tailgate. So that's my guideline. I'm going to sit that over the spot and then we'll see how far we've got to go here and it's roughly quarter of an inch from this steel bar and then straight across to the other side where it'll be the same distance away we'll start in the middle and work our way sideways till we get to the corners. Okay, if you can see here, right here, you'll see a marker on the edge of the rubber and the tailgate. And another one here where my guide tape and the rubber come together. These are the center line marks. I'm going to cut the, the tape cover here and peel it off that direction and seal that side first going that way then come back here in the middle peel this off a little at a time and go the other direction until this whole side is adhered where I need it to be. I got plenty of room on this side if it varies a little bit that's fine but here on this side it's got to be exact to go on that boss right the tape has to be right on it. So, mark, 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 and hopefully that will stay where it needs to be. Let's hope. Instructions say do not press hard on this. Press lightly because if you press hard it will seal itself in place forever. That's not exactly what we're looking for. worked out okay. Do the other side.
Close enough. Beautiful. All done. All right, it's in place. I've let it sit here and dry for a few minutes. The directions say once you're absolutely sure you got everything where you want it to be, then you need to roll the the tape area and put pressure on and press it down hard and that will permanently attach it. Uh, they say to use a, a uh, roller as, as if you were installing tile or something or a ball peen hammer. I'm going to use a dolly, body and fender dolly. I've had this for 40 years so might as well use it for one more time. Okay, hopefully that will do the trick. Okay, here's a little difficulty that they don't explain in the instructions got the new screws but where the tailgate top cover overlaps this the holes in it are pretty good sized and the washers here that they supply will not cover that hole so we'll fix this the easy way use the original screws and put them back in these are long enough to still work here uh, up here in the other holes where the material is a lot thicker and eh, probably not so much like across here so we're going to keep using these back here and use the rest of the screws on the everything else okay we're back at it Oh, why the two different drill things, you ask? Torx screws for these black ones and regular old Phillips heads for the steel ones. And I'm too, too, too darn lazy to swap back and forth, so we'll use both.
Okay, one more thing to do. We got to put these seals around the uh, bed corners going up to the edge at the top of the bed. Uh, if you look at this, you'll see this is the way that you would probably do it, and the instructions don't really get specific about it. Okay, this is the way you would probably do it. You would stick this rubber soft seal up here on the edge of your metal so that they lined up like this, right? And when the tailgate closed, it would hit that and it would be fine. Unfortunately, it's not, because this doesn't give the way you think it does. And if you come up here and just have it like this and close the tailgate on it, it won't crush enough to allow the tailgate to close. So we don't want that. So when we mount this, I'm going to mount it out here so that this edge, this sealed gasket area, is just off the edge of the metal right here. That way, when the tailgate closes, this whole thing will flex like that. And it won't keep, it won't jam the tailgate, but it will still provide a good seal all the way around. Okay. All right. I don't know how well this is going to work with a shadowed area and black paint, but uh, this goes along the bottom, this front edge here, right out to the outside corner, all the way up and up here and then it'll curve outward along the edge all the way to this spot right here so that's all it is is from that spot at the bottom all the way around the outside edge with the uh, the gasket part on the outside like this right on the outside of the corner okay and then when the tailgate closes, this little piece will flex, but it will still be up against the tailgate and provide a seal. All right. There's not enough room in here for the camera and my hands and this, so I'm just going to measure it, cut it, stick it on here, and it'll be done. All right. Let's look here in the corner, see if the GoPro will show it. Uh, here's our gasket. And it is coming from the bottom up along the edge. And up to this point, and it curves inward and stops right here. All right. Zip over here to the other side. Same thing. It starts here comes up, goes around this little rubber stopper, and stops here. All right, the last thing to do I don't think you can see in there, but the gasket is perfectly set up, just barely pressed in so where it's Pretty much airtight. Hopefully it's dust proof. But dust is an insidious monster. Who knows? No matter what we do, we're not going to get rid of all of it. Be back in a second. flat surface. It's a good thing. That's it. It's done. Like I said, it's a very minimal project, really. No real planning involved. All you're doing is just replacing a, the tailgate cover and putting in some sealing. So, it doesn't take much. This took uh, 90 minutes, hour and a half. And if I hadn't been messing with cameras and moving things around, if I'd just done it, it would have taken about an hour. So, nice easy project, but it's going to have great results. The dust intrusion inside the camper will be absolutely minimal now, because you'll never get rid of all of it. But minimal dust intrusion, got a work table I can use, I can cook on it, I can 
to actually do things on it and not have stuff fall over or get lost. It's a win-win. So if you have not yet dust proofed your truck, you really, really should. If you're doing any kind of off-road stuff at all with a pickup and a camper, you really need to do this. Uh, it's cheap. Uh, just the the dust rock kit is about $45 to $50 depending on where you buy it. And you don't need to put in the table thing if you don't want to. So $50 to dust proof or uh, make it dust resistant. So it's worth the money. Yeah, you can thank me later. Okay, that's it. I'll see you next time, everybody. And I believe I'm going to be doing uh, at least part of the Finnish electrical work. Uh, not to let the cat out of the bag. But I've been asked to go on the pioneering trip, an eight-day off-road trip, 570 miles of two-track and single lane dirt and gravel road across Idaho. Uh, pioneering trip from with Southwest Idaho overlanding to verify the uh, west to east Idaho off-road route that he's come up with. So I'll be going along with George for, God, a week at least, maybe eight days to get across Idaho f finding our way down roads that we haven't been on before. Okay, so, hey, where's that cat? i got to get him back in the bag. Okay, see you later. Oh, hey there. If you were good enough to sit around and watch that entire video to the end, I've got a bonus for you. Here it is. All of us need window curtains window coverings of some sort for thermal protection to keep it cool inside or warm inside and of course you know privacy curtains that too but here's a tip for you if you need warm ones thermally insulated go down to Harbor Freight pick up a couple of these five dollar moving blankets and cut them to fit and stick them up there Works like a charm. And if you just want summer weight ones that are lightweight, inexpensive, and very durable, go down to Goodwill or your local thrift store and pick up some light colored bath towels. You know, white, light tan, yellow, whatever, light colors. And cut those to fit and put them up. Very simple. All you got to do is trim them to fit, put some bias tape on the end, on the ends, sew it up so it looks reasonably professional, and you're good to go. Uh, you do know what bias tape is, right? No. Okay. Well, if you don't know what bias tape is, or bobbins, or Pat or material clips and things like that, ask your wife <laughs> or your girlfriend or significant other. It requires a sewing machine. Yeah, I know, I know. But, unlike a, some overlanders in the Pacific Northwest, <coughs> Donald, <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, unlike some of them, uh, I know how to use a sewing machine, and I'm not afraid to do it. And I'm not afraid to admit that I can use a sewing machine either. It's a manly thing. It's a skill every guy should have. Anyway, uh, that's my that's my tip for you. For for insulation in winter time, use the moving blankets. For just Window coverings in the summertime, when you still want to keep it fairly bright in here, 
and, re and reflect sunlight, get some light colored bath towels, cut them to fit, life is good. Okay, your tip for the day. Catch you later.